on the nose. Alex held Valgrit in his firm hand, pressing her head to his shoulder. His breath brushed across her ear. Don't look, no matter what you hear. That's how it gets you. All the other victims had turned to ice. Alex couldn't understand why. The rules didn't apply to him. None of the deceased were family, so maybe that was his armour. His family history protected him somehow. They were huddled between the furnace and the basement while they attempted to construct an escape plan. Although in a front Alex knew the level of the heat from the unit should be enough to throw the beast terribly off the trail. A foul spirit followed the warmth from the living, which made hiding from its ghostly grips difficult. The tighter he held Margaret, the more he worried about Wilbury. His little brother had bolted in another direction. Alex was careful not to touch the hot metal tank as he peered through it. He made a mistake a few years back of carelessly brushing against it while moving some boxes. A scar on his right arm left a permanent reminder. Alex crinkled his nose. Damp walls and seventy-year-old pipes needed more than a little fresh air. It's dark at every corner, except for a shiver of light emanating from a single ground level window. He hated the basement, especially the furnace room. In the part of the below ground space that wasn't finished, he felt like he stepped into a portal to hell every time he was there. He could sense the darkened soul still lurking in the shadows, but couldn't hone on it. Only the goosebumps staying at attention, his arms confirmed his suspicions. He eased back behind the tank. His plan worked for a moment, but it also limited his options. Now he needed a solid way to find Wilbury and escape. I think I know how we can get out of the house, Alex spoke softly. But you've got to have, got to have, trust me. She nodded her head, her eyes widened with fear. The evil normally the type to rattle easily. This one had them both off balance. I know you're really scared right now, but so am I. But I also know that you can do this. I'm going to lead the creature toward the attic. Alex, no! Margaret grabbed his T-shirt and gripped tightly. He softly smiled. You'll follow me, then you'll get the hell out of here. I'll find a Wilbury. Tried my, my mum's move first. He used to hide under her bed when he was little. It made him feel safe. Luckily, the thing stayed on her heels. I know the darkness is down there. With us, my bumps go ashore. After I get its attention, I'm going to run for the stairs. You give it a minute or two before following. Get Wilbury and then head back down here and out that window. And it's pointed to the ground window. It's big enough for Wilbury and Margaret to fit through. See the large wrench on the bench? Use it to break the window. Mum has ra- rags over there. Two, line the edge of, so that your guys don't get cut. Why can't we just break one of the windows in the den? They're larger. No, it must be harder to break through one of the double planes. That would attract a lot more attention. This way, you would barely be heard. Margaret shook her head. I can't leave you. A tear streamed down her cheek. I need you to do this for Wilbury, Alex hesitated. He yearned to kiss her, but settled for a pal hug. Text me when both of you are out. How are you going to get the hell out of the house? Don't worry, I've got a plan. There, there was no plan. We had to tell her something. So you agree. Margaret's fear is fierce when it comes to protecting the ones she loves. He pulled away and eased out into the open. A chill ran up his spine. It was close. Alex squirmed, trying to distinguish the difference in the shadows. He took a step forward. A blast of cold air startled him raising the hair on his arms and rolling the butterflies in his stomach. He was headed straight toward the evil spirit. A low gravel hum tailed to his ears. Could Margaret hear it? He shook his head. No, he was about to call out and give her up her location. He shuffled his eyes toward the right, his heart pounding. The beast lunged forward and reached out with a translucent icy hand. 
Icy ducked and sir Alex ducked and swerved. Spinning around, he ran straight for the door and crossed the threshold before he could stop him. He scrambled up the stairs and made a mistake of turning back. It was a costly move. He tipped, tripped, and his body hit the floorboards, scraping the knees. He could feel stinging guts, but chose to annoy it. A frozen grip seized his leg. A layer of ice spread across the demon like fungus. Furiously, Alex kicked free and scrambled back to his feet, running for the staircase to the second level. The entrance to the attic was in the hallway. Once he got the spirit there, he could buy Margaret the time she needed. He reached the top of the staircase, round the corner, and reached for the knob. There was no need. The door flew open, slamming it into the wall. Chits of plaster exploded and nicked Alex near his left eye. He didn't stop. Taking the step. Taking the steep steps, too. At a time, he ran to a central room. He heard the door slam. He knew his plan worked. He was alone with a dark soul. Nowhere, and nowhere to go. Days earlier, Opta Uber was a far the most vibrant month in Floral Park. Alex preferred the crisp, cold air over the deep, over the heat of summer, and would patiently wait. Each September to scoop out the 90 degree temperatures to make way for the aromatic autumn nights. A warm cupboard pulled on the bed. He worked over the summer community pool, saving nearly everything he earned. Now, with winter and holidays coming, he's hoping to get a job after school. Means his goal of buying a car. If he could save up three grand, his mum would match it. Only 1,848 bucks to go. Jumping in the shower, he barely had time for the water to get hot. The alarm bleeped, but the flashing numbers indicated some other power outrage. Outage during the night. He realised now, late, it was after he checked his phone for messages from Margaret. He briskly dried off and stepped into the coin vines of his second skin, pulling it up inch by inch. It seemed to help. He wiggled and twisted a little. He suddenly wiggled and passed his wrist, hips, and wrist, then yanked it up his chest. He adjusted it straightening and stooping, before slipping on his t-shirt, jeans and hoodie. He was out on the door. He missed the bus, so he pulled on his current mode. Pulled out his current mode of transportation. At 16, it was a course wasn't the coolest way to show up out of school. But I didn't bite, but a lot quicker than walking. I just didn't spend much time worrying. What others thought, live and let live was his motto. Alex pedalled past Mr. Caronicio's house. The elderly woman's raking leaves on the front lawn. Her only son had been killed of Vietnam War. He lost her husband a heart attack two years ago. Something. Times he and Margaret brought a pasta, a care passage from his mum. Alex waved, but she didn't see him. Pulling on the bike rack, he saw Margaret pacing in front of the school, a barrow's flower flowered. He latched the front frame, screwed it to rack, just his back and hustled over. Hey, are you waiting out here? You're missing first period, he grabbed her arm, a pulled her through the academic, academic cave. I'm getting worried. I texted you for over three times, I'm sorry. The power went off and I overslept. Did you lose power at your house too? Margaret's eyes narrowed. Lose power? No, Alex. You could have at least take me back. All the, the weird crap that's going on around here, that wasn't fair. Alex sighed to himself. She was his person. The only the one that he would confide everything to, and know his words would be safe. They took care of each other. Speaking of weird, did you hear what happened last night? Outside the church, Alex grabbed the science book at his backpack. I'd better get this out now. I'm already late. And Mrs. Kine going to be pissed enough. You are so frustrating sometimes. What happened at church? And Margaret crossed her arms. I found that Craig was early, but dead on the back path to the rectory. His body was frozen. What the hell? Frozen? Did you did you say how? Did they say how? No. They didn't know yet. It's all over the late night news. I can't believe you didn't hear anything. 
must have been bed at about around ten o'clock. I was also for studying on the pointless calculus test today. I swear I will never understand why. Take some well, those bullshit classes. I went to go uh, go to art school, not become some damn engineer. Margaret disdain, failing no concern. Your eyes look sunken in. How late did you stay last night? Up. How late did you stay out last night? About one o'clock. My head was kidding me. I had so many headaches lately. So well, has my mum. It's a pain in the arse. Alex dropped his chin towards his chest. How are you going? How are you doing now? Margaret reached for him, but quickly pulled back. Better. Then he seemed to come at night. Poor Mr. Early, his family. I know his son, Oliver. I know. He was a really nice man. He and his, my dad would golf together. Agreed to meet in the football field at lunch. He watched her rush down the opposite end of the hallway. He had the, that feeling in. The one that told him things were going to get stranger. At times he hated the spidey sense. The superhero technology, technology that Margaret used to describe his abilities. The boy in the load and the little, with all the little silent. Mr. Klein went easy on him for being late. I was sure it was because of the news. About Mr. Elderly, his strange death was just the latest oddity, and playing in the town for the last two weeks. A body started to pile up. In every case, the victim's head was frozen solid. Alex wasn't sure what was responsible for this latest dream occurrences, but he didn't know. He needed to call his great-grandmother, or Gram, as he always referred to her. She was a go, go, the go-go for weirdness in the family. He knew his mum wasn't going to do it. He tried to prove all the things. Did she try to annoy all the strangers that were surrounded the family, hoping it would protect them? The problem was, she, you can't deny it. It was always there. It wasn't denying you, so he learned how to work with it. Graham had been teaching him, showing him how to cope with his gifts and how to use them. He watched the hands of a large clock hanging above Mrs. Klein's desk. Three more classes until lunch. Ugh. Thankfully, he was seated by the window in the next two classes, which was a world of welcome distraction. The puzzle pieces of murders that flo- floated around his mind, frustrated him. Multiple deaths by the hands of what? He'd even seen a case like this. It frightened him. After the lunch bell, he headed to the field. He got there early as he whipped out his phone and googled, How long does it take to freeze to death? Alex turned his head just as Margaret was running. Round in the corner of the bleachers. He jumped up to the second level and sat beside him. He quickly turned his phone screen off, giving his, her his full attention. A natural beauty, a chestnut hair, flowed to a curtain down her back, falling freely unless you were on the case. Then it pulled back in a loose ponytail for some serious research. Her eyes melted every, him every time, light brown with effects of gold. He could lose his soul with those eyes. Best friends forever. He repeated the phrase in his mind. What are you doing, Margaret? Lightly punched his shoulder. Alex exclaimed. I was checking how long it would take to freeze to death. You think one of them might have gotten away? The whole thing is disturbing. It's like there's a serum for Mr. Freeze in Floral Park. How, how was your morning? Alex put his phone back in the pocket. Long and boring, I swear. I can't wait till we graduate college. Has to be better than this. Alex frowned his brow. I don't know, but at least it will be our choice to go. I hate the confines of being told. It's quiet. I know, me too. What's on your our next move? I'll call you my gram later. She might be able to give us some insight. Sounds good. How's Wilbury going with doing his training? You haven't I don't notice him mentioned it lately. Wilbury? Real name William was Alex's younger brother, a newest member of the family, to start his ghostly training. He's training fine. I'm worried. He doesn't seem to have to know. I remember going to preschool and seeing things others didn't. Wilbury hasn't experienced that yet. He knows strange things happen. That's because he's, he's told, not that he sensed them. I hope he's just a late starter. I know that others in the family didn't, didn't have the ability to show up. Until they're eight or nine. So I'll keep waiting. No, nothing to do with having this thing. Not if I know. We have a better chance of dealing with something if, you, if we could see it. And since it seems to circle my family, where we are, we'll be better equipped. Do 
Don't you think that maybe it's easier for where we not to see things? I mean, he doesn't see it. He won't. He doesn't deal with it. No, I know what you mean. But it's all around him anyway. So long as we're near him, me, mum, or almost anyone of the son family, he said septal. I think my dad would have learned to deal with it, but mum, turning up Brian and I, made it harder. Things would happen, so he didn't want to talk about it. He was left with one foot in the strange and the other in the everyday life. I think, for a lot of years, it frustrated him. You think that's why he left? I don't know, maybe. He seems better now that they apart. The course turned him into a real father. A year, new life, new kids, new outlook. Margaret smirked. She clasped over his arm, weaved it with hers, and lay her head on his shoulder. Now his head had fallen across his chest. I'm glad we're best friends, Alex. McKenna, can he? A whiff of mint tickled his nostrils. He turned his cheek towards the city socks. Ah, me too.